Do you know how to treat your essential tremor? This is the topic today. My name is Dr. Sayas. I am a neurologist specialized in movement disorders. Before talking about non-surgical treatment, we want to make five points very clear. Point number one. Very important to have the correct diagnosis. Other, otherwise, things will not work well. You will get the incorrect treatment. I always say to try to see a specialist. Uh, when I say a specialist, I mean a movement disorder a doctor, a neurologist, a specialized fellowship trained in movement disorder, if available in your area. If you need to drive four hours to see this specialist, do it because we are talking here about your health. Other important thing is try to see, um, to review the website of the other doctor. Look the background, reviews, all these things are important. I do the same thing when I'm looking for, for a doctor uh, to treat a family member or if I need a, a second opinion. Remember, medicine is getting very, very complex every day. The complexity of the treatment and diagnosis are not the same that that. 20 years ago is different. Misdiagnosis is very, very common. Check this study uh, published in 2006. If you see here, about one in three patients with tremors was uh, misdiagnosed as having essential tremor. And we are talking about here a 33% of the patient misdiagnosed. And interestingly, 88% of those patients that were misdiagnosed, they were seen by a non-movement disorder neurologist before a movement disorder clinic evaluation in New York. Point number two, essential tremor is more common than Parkinson's disease by far. To give you an idea, up to 14% of the population older than 65 years old have essential tremor. These numbers vary depending on which study you read. Point number three, there is no cure for essential tremor. We have treatment approved by FDA for essential tremor. However, approximately one third to half of the patient do not respond to medication. And when medication help, it's usually approximately 30 to 60% in decreasing the amplitude of the tremor. So imagine that you have a tremor of 20 inches, which is something like this, 20 inches of the tremor. And, and I'm telling you that with medications, we might decrease approximately 50% of this tremor. So which means that 10 inches decrease. So you had 20 and now you had 10 still is significant amount of tremor, which obviously will affect your life and your function. You barely can eat. You cannot basically do anything with the hand, even if you decrease 50% of the amplitude of the tremor. So those patients require surgery. If you want to know more about surgery to treat essential tremor, check this video about surgical uh, intervention. Point number four. In most cases, the tremor worsens over time, especially when you get older. Point number five, mild cases usually don't need treatment. Only you treat when your function is getting affected, including your social function. You need to ask yourself if the tremors are affecting your life or not. And if the answer is yes, then look for treatment. Otherwise, just decrease the amount of caffeine treat your anxiety, try to decrease the amount of alcohol. And remember, alcohol might decrease the tremor, but the next day you will have a rebound effect. So you will have more tremor. So you have to be careful with that. Now let's talk about how to treat essential tremor. First line treatment are the following. The first medication I always try uh, first is propanol. This one here, propanol. Uh, I always try 10 milligrams uh, twice daily, which is a very low dose, but some patients respond very well just with a low dose. And 
if this is not effective, I increase progressively every week and based on tolerance and effectiveness. Contraindications, this is important. Low pulse, so low heart rate. So if your heart rate is below 60, probably this is not a good idea to use these medications unless you have a pacemaker. If you have asthma, moderate or severe asthma also might be a problem. So I would not use uh, this medication in somebody who has uh, severe asthma or even moderate asthma, especially when they are taking uh, medication that uh, cause uh, bronchodilation because the propanol will cause the opposite effect. So you will have more breathing issues, wheezing, all these things. So you have to be careful with that. If you have a severe heart block, that's an issue too. So make sure that you tell your doctor uh, about any uh, cardiac arrhythmia that you might have. The common side effects is fatigue and probably related with how low is your heart rate. So some patients uh, uh, start this medication and the heart rate goes below 60. So they will feel very, very fatigued. Now, medication number two is primidone. So if propanol doesn't work for you, this is my second choice. Actually, primidone tend to be more effective uh, than propanol in the majority of the patient, but it has more side effects. I typically start with 50 milligrams tablet, but I tell the patient to cut the tablet half. So which means 25 milligrams at night for one week and increase progressively by 25 milligrams every week uh, based on effectiveness and tolerance. Contraindication. So if you have porphyria, this is a contraindication because remember, uh, primidone is metabolized in phenobarbital 25%. Uh, so those medications are contraindicated if you have this disease, very rare disease. A relative contraindication is depression because this medication might cause depression in approximately 40% of the cases. So you have to be careful. Now, common side effect. This is the common side effect that you see in the clinic. Number one, sedation. And usually dose dependent, dose dependent. It depends how high you go, but some patients, even with a low dose, they cannot tolerate this medication. The other one, especially acutely during the beginning, is feeling sick, now she it. Uh, that's a common side effect. Dizziness and vertigo are also dose dependent, depend how high you go. Balance issues, coordination problem, we call that ataxia. So if your essential tremor, well, actually, essential tremor, 50% of the patient, they might have ataxia in coordination. So if you use this medication and you go very high in terms of doses, the ataxia, the in coordination, balance issues might get worse. So pay attention to that. Also, you might feel slow mentally. And again, it's usually dose dependent, depend how high you go. The other problem that we have is that you need to watch out uh, for interaction because this medication is an inducer. So, so induce uh, hepatic enzymes, which means that it might interact, uh, basically eating other medication that you are taking. So you have to tell your doctor, uh, your doctor need to know what other medication do you take in order to decrease the probability of having interaction, right? Another point I want to make about this medication is that doses over 250 milligrams daily are rarely more effective, okay? So I, I actually, I don't have any patient taking over 250 because probably you will be looking for more trouble. Medication number three, topiramate. So topiramate is an anti-seizure medication uh, approved by FDA for migraine headaches and also as an anti-seizure medication, anti-epileptic medication. I typically use, um, start with 25 milligrams. Uh, I tell the patient to start at night and increase by 25 milligrams every week based on tolerance and effectiveness. Uh, many patients require um, 100 milligrams twice daily, but sometimes even with, with 25 twice daily, it would be enough to help a patient that don't respond to the other two medications that I mentioned, uh, propanol and primidone. Common side effects. Oh, by the way, contraindication. Basically, 
pregnancy is category D, okay, which means that uh, uh, there is a possibility of you having teratogenicity. It's a, a cleft here that babies might have. Common side effects, tingling sensation, usually hands, okay? That happens and usually goes away after a few weeks. Weight loss, people, many people like that, but it's a weight loss is a, a common side effect uh, from this medication. Taste issues, the food doesn't taste well, it's different. Hard for patient to describe that. Fatigue, so all these medications that we use for essential tremor, they cause fatigue. Topamax also, or topiramate, might cause a worth finding difficulty. And usually it's a dose dependent side effect. Mental slowness, you feel slow, fogginess. Uh, and again, usually dose dependent. The other uh, group of medication, this is the second line treatment, okay? I always try those three medication first. If that doesn't work or is not helping, then or any contraindication, I use the second line treatment. But I, I typically avoid the number five. We're going to talk soon about the number five here. But number four is gabapentin. So gabapentin, I start with doses of 100 to 300 at night and increase progressively by 100 to 300 uh, every week based on tolerance, effectiveness, and kidney function because the doses depend on uh, your kidney functions. Contraindication, basically none, unless you are allergic to the medication, which is uh, very rare. I haven't seen that, but certainly it's possible. Um, most common side effect, again, fatigue and sedation, very common in all of this medication. And dizziness, dizziness is, is, can, can, can be common with uh, gabapentin as well. Um, you might actually gain weight with gabapentin, I didn't put that here, but you might gain weight. That's another side effect. Now let's talk up. Let's talk about benzos. Um, benzos. I try to stay away for this type of medication. The medications that we have on more data is actually alprazolam, uh, clonazepam, so so. The, the data is very mixed. I do not use this medication just for tremors, and certainly I don't use alprazolam at all. So the patients that I have on alprazolam, I can count with, with one hand. And it's because those medications are taking alprazolam before coming to my clinic. And um, and they don't want to be off of this medication. So, and the, my main concern about alprazolam is the risk of addiction, okay? This is a big problem with alprazolam. Alprazolam is Xanax, what we, what we call Xanax, it's the same. Xanax, alprazolam is the same. Clonazepam is a long-acting benzodiazepine. So the chances of having addiction are lower, but still it's possible. Most common side effect beside the risk of addiction, which is my, our main concern, is sedation, fatigue, balance issues, and mental slowness. You feel kind of a slow mentally, a foggy, and uh, basically cognitive cognitive. Uh, memory problems as well. If oral medication doesn't work for you, then the next step is to try botulinum toxin injection. We have four, but I use mostly three. Uh, I'm sorry, two of them, uh, Xeomin and Botox. Xeomin here, we have here, and Botox. This is the two that I use to treat patients with, with tremors uh, when I'm treating hands. So um, this is quite safe because the doses that we use are very tiny, very low, um, and mostly two, two to four muscles, uh, usually the flexor area. I use a machine, we call that the EMG machine to help me to localize the muscle based on the noise. The most common side effect that you can have with this uh, treatment is weakness of the muscle that I'm injecting or the muscle around the muscle that I'm injecting. This is a... Not frequent because I use, especially the first cycle, a very, very low dose. Um, so that's why you need to give me two, and many times, three times, three, three cycles, three cycles, uh, in order to say that this treatment is not um, um, helping you. So always try to give the doctor three chances before saying that this treatment is ineffective. Now let's talk about non-pharmacological treatment. The first treatment that we are going to talk is what we call calatrio. 
So it is like having a watch that produces electrical stimulation to two nerves that we have here, okay? Decreasing the amplitude of the tremor approximately 50% for 90 minutes, approximately one hour, 30 minutes. It is contraindicated if you have a pacemaker, if you have a deep brain stimulation, or you have seizures. So if you, if you want to get more information about this uh, device, just go to the website. There is a, a lot of information there. Um, uh, by the way, medical insurance are covering this device, but you need a physician order. So go to the website here and to get more information. The other device is what we call, is an anti-tremor orthotic glove. Um, apparently help to decrease the amplitude of the tremor approximately 50%. Uh, you might go to this website uh, to get more information about this this uh, device that apparently also is covered is covered by the medical insurance, but you need a physician order. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you soon.